But let's back up a little bit. It's possible to have a harmonic balancer that has shifted. Um, a lot of balancers have a rubber vibration dampener in between uh, the two uh, uh, cast iron sections and it's possible for the outer hub of the balancer to walk on the inner hub. If that happens then it really doesn't matter that you've marked zero on your harmonic balancer uh, because zero might not be zero and then you're going to be way off. I uh, haven't seen that often but I've seen it at least once and it was on this car. I had put a brand new 351 Cleveland in it and uh, having a really hard time tuning it up, getting everything dialed in. I set it at, uh, at 14 degrees before top to center initial advance and it just wouldn't run at all. And I knew something was wrong. So I used the uh, piston stop method to check my uh, harmonic balancer. And I found out that zero, uh, the actual top dead center, true top dead center of the number one piston, was not where the harmonic balancer showed it. When I found uh, the true uh, top dead center of number one and marked it, it was actually, um, according to the hash marks on the uh, harmonic balancer, it was actually 24 degrees advance. So the harmonic balancer was telling me, hey, this is 24 degrees advance. But in fact, when I checked it with the piston stop, it was uh, it was uh, z that was zero. Uh, so real life zero was marked as 24, which will throw you off by 24 degrees when you're trying to set your timing, and uh, it'll give you fits. So how do you use a piston stop? Well, first of all, you can buy them on eBay for about 10 bucks. I just made this one using an old spark plug. You can see the spark plug here where you put the 13 16 wrench on it and here's the threads where it screws into the uh, the cylinder head obviously I've removed the uh, the ground terminal on it where you normally set your uh, plug gap and uh, I just put it in a vise and I used a, a hammer and a chisel to remove uh, you know the, the ceramic uh, the, pretty much the rest of the spark plug um, chiseled all that out and then drilled the center of it with a 5 16 drill bit and then used a, uh, a 3 8 tap coarse thread and tapped the center of this thing for 3 8 thread and then I got some 3 8 all thread and I ran it through there where I had tapped it and then I just put a jam nut on this end so it just screws in the cylinder head like this and uh, like a normal spark plug would only instead of you know where your, your spark plug your plug wire would hook up now you've got this and instead of where your uh, uh, your uh, terminal would be there at the end uh, to, to gap it. Now you've got this uh, all thread sticking out. This all thread is going to stick down into uh, the piston's uh, travel. So it's going to stop your piston. You're going to try to bring your piston up to top dead center and this is going to stop it and it won't travel any further. So then you have to turn your crankshaft around the other way and your piston will come all the way back down again and then it'll come all the way back up and it'll hit your stop again. So, do that real quick. Hopefully, oh, before I run out of footage, you just have to uh, remove the number one spark plug and put this stop in its place. Grab some tools. All right. We get the spark plug out of here. You know, one thing I should mention is uh, if you were to install your piston stop and inadvertently uh, your starter were to engage, you would destroy your number one piston. So here's a good piece of advice. Do this take the negative off your battery like so and now uh, your starter cannot engage and you won't destroy your engine because you really don't want to forget that you've got a piston stop in your engine and try to start your engine because the piston will just wipe itself out on your piston stop so the piston stop goes right in where the spark plug was
then I've already got the jam nut that I showed you on that. That's already tight. I've already set the length of it pretty much where I want it. Um, you have to experiment to get the length just right. But I've already done that. So the all thread is through the spark plug, the modified spark plug. And uh, and the jam nut is jammed on there, and that just kind of keeps everything solid. You know, I can't remove that all thread. I can't spin it out because that jam nut is holding it in there. Um, so now that's going in where the the piston's going to go. Let's see. Let me loosen it real quick. Show you something. back out entirely. Alright. Easiest if you take this and turn it clockwise to begin with. So you see we've just passed top dead center. Take it clockwise a little bit like that. Because it's usually easier to turn your engine by hand clockwise and just to turn it counterclockwise. So we'll do that first rather than the other way like I had it set up initially. So we're putting this stop back in there. Torquing it down. And then of course this is the uh, the spark plug socket 13 16 for this engine. Of course a lot of engines like that the small Chevy over here, that one takes 5 eighths, I believe, and the Mach 1 takes 5 eighths. So it all depends on uh, on your engine. But if you use one of your old spark plugs for your engine, then you'll have the right size. Or, like I say, go on eBay and find a piston stop that's the right uh, the right size for your engine. Most engines are 14 millimeter thread size, but not all of them are the same. So just make sure you get the right one. And they're about 10 bucks on eBay, or you can just make one like I did. All right. So that's in there tight. And I'll take this and I'll turn it counterclockwise, which I said was hardest. And right there, you see it stopped. Um, that's as far as I can turn it because the piston has hit the stop. So I turn it clockwise again, so I can turn it clockwise. But if I try to turn it counterclockwise, right there, that's hitting the stop. Let's see if you can hear it. No. Now, you can't hear it, but you can feel it. Right there, the piston has hit the piston stop, and that looks like it's about 10 degrees after top dead center, so that's 10 degrees retarded. So now what do you do? I'm going to take some orange RTV. It's just useful stuff. And I'm going to mark, not the pointer, the pointer is already marked blue. I'm going to mark the balancer right there. There, that's a good mark. So, let's see. So I took some orange RTV, some ultra copper, looks orange, and I, I turned it so that the uh, the piston hit the stop, and right where it hit the stop, I marked the balancer where the balancer is lined up with my pointer, because the pointer is your constant. So now I cannot turn the engine counterclockwise any further. The only way I can go is this way. When I do this, it's bringing the piston back down. And once the piston gets to bottom dead center, then it's going to start coming back up on its compression stroke towards top dead center of the compression stroke. And obviously, somewhere before top dead center of the compression stroke, that's where you want your spark plug to fire. Alright, 
so there's 50 according to my hash marks there's just past 40 there's 30 and 20 should hit the stop pretty soon and there's the stop I can't get farther than that see if I back it up and then go forward that's it that's as far as I can turn it because pistons come all the way back up again and it's hitting the stop again so of course now you take this orange and you mark it right there and guess what right in between your two orange marks if you were to take a measuring tape and measure right in between those two marks that's going to be your true top dead center of the number one piston and like I said earlier that will show top dead center of your compression stroke and top dead center of your exhaust stroke because top dead center is top dead center uh, the timing marks are going to say the, say the same if I take it if this is the compression stroke and I take it another 360 degrees on the crankshaft and it comes right back up again to where those two blue line uh, two blue marks line up again that's still top dead center but if this is the compression stroke the next time around will be the exhaust stroke so a lot of people the mistake I see a lot of people making is they drop their distributor in on top dead center of the exhaust stroke because it looks the same the timing marks line up everything looks fine but if you set your uh, d your uh, uh, spark plug to fire at top dead center of your exhaust stroke your engine is not going to run very well and obviously this looks perfect um, I would say that right in between those two orange marks on the harmonic balancer is in fact my blue mark but like I said you know it, it's good just to know now we know for a fact that that blue mark is solid for uh, for setting timing on this car you know it, it's, it's good it's reassuring um, I didn't suspect anything was wrong with this one but if you are having trouble timing a car it's just a quick and easy thing to check just to make sure that when you are timing it um, your harmonic balancer isn't lying to you because like I said on that 70 Mach 1, that 351 Cleveland the balancer, it's an old balancer you know as old as I am, 41 years old and uh, if the balancer has shifted on you it can certainly lie and, uh, and it will mess you up so now the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to fire this engine up and we're going to set the timing the initial timing and then we're going to check the total timing but like we were saying there's a reason that our battery is disconnected and we've got our tool off of the crankshaft because we want to start the engine with that on there either alright so we'll grab our socket set up we're done with our piston stop Get that out of there. Put our spark plug back in. And 